So what mindset should you have as the stocks you own keep falling? So first off, I'm going to start with, I truly believe for that 99 plus percent of people, they should dollar cost average into low cost ETFs with the vast majority of their money. Why? Because you're in it for the long haul. You might as well match the stock market. And that can be done by buying any number of low cost ETFs like SPY or VOO that match the S&P. Why fight it? You can beat over 90% of actively managed mutual funds on a five or 10 year basis that are run by all these Harvard MBAs and MIT grads. Just follow that process. But this video is about you owning a chunk of 10 or 20 companies that you like. Now, this can be hard. As you're buying these companies, this could end up being one of those situations where you've been enjoying it for a while. It's been going up, a little bit of hiccup, and now it's starting to come down like this. So the first thing I'm going to say is, you've properly run your analysis using our channel's information, using our channel's software that we have right here, using our community, assuming you've done all that, and you think the value of the company is above where it's currently at. The hard part is, what do you do? Because it sucks to see your money go down. And trust me when I say that, you're not the only one. I don't like seeing it either. I'm probably much better at it than most people. I probably do view it as, oh, it's an opportunity to buy. But you still are going to second guess your decision. The good news is, if you understand the fundamentals of a company, and you bought it for a reasonable price, or the stock is currently at a reasonable price, what should you do? Buy more of it. Because you don't know when it's going to all of a sudden turn around and rebound. You don't know anything that's going to happen. Back in 2000, 2001, and 2002, the S&P went down three years in a row. But small and mid-cap stocks were up for the most part. That's pretty impressive. Everybody was ignoring those stocks. So when finally stocks, the high-flying companies that made no money started to uh, fall off, people wanted cash flow and good balance sheets and good metrics, and they bought those companies. The same is going to happen in some way, shape, or form in this market. Will it be small and mid-cap? I don't know what it's going to be. But there's always a bull market somewhere. Look at gas prices this year. Look at oil and gas companies. They're up a ton this year. Berkshire Hathaway is up 2.5% this year. The market's down 15% or more. So from this perspective, let's say you've determined this is the value of the company. And this difference is 15%. Why would you not buy? It's easy to sit there and buy when it's going up. You think, oh, I'm right here. But that's not what we want you to do. What you need to do is constantly be evaluating the company. When I say constantly, I really mean every quarter or so, especially if it's a company you want to own long-term. So what's a company you should own long-term? Good balance sheet, good sort of market share. Now, I'm not going to use the cliche of buy a moat. No, buy a company that has good market share, a leader in the industry, it has some sort of competitive advantage. It doesn't have to be the best competitive advantage, but at least some sort of competitive advantage. That's going to be seen with a high return on invested capital, something greater than 10% consistently over long periods of time, not just in one year. Then if stocks go lower, you should use it as a buying opportunity. The example I give is, this is an iPhone 14. This thing is, let's say, worth all day long $1,000. If somebody offered it to me today for $600, would I buy one? Absolutely. If tomorrow somebody offered me the same phone for 500, would I be upset that I paid $600 to save for it? Like, no, I got two great deals. That's how I want you to look at stocks. Oh, great. The company was 60 bucks yesterday. Now it's 50. I'll buy even more. Again, it makes sure that you are buying the company based on the right fundamentals that you can do using our tools. But the point is, the hard part is the mentality mindset of the whole thing. A good investor is not some brilliant math wizard. Look at FTX. SBF went to MIT. That is the elite of elite of math wizards. And guess what? He still couldn't keep track of $8 billion that were lost in the company. So it has nothing to do with intelligence. It has everything to do with process and mindset. Money was easy. Money was flowing. He did not care. It's so easy to lose track when things are going well. What I need you to do is have the proper emotion and mindset that when stocks go down, you go back to your process reevaluate your companies and the thesis is still the same and the company is selling for less and you have more cash to buy, you buy more stock. That is the key to all of this. And you don't stop doing your dollar cost average every month, every quarter, every week, whatever it is. Keep investing as time goes on. 
But the point is on individual companies that you own and love, that you want to compound for a long time, you've got to understand what intrinsic value is. What's the value of the business in a normal market? And can you buy it for an ample margin of safety that gives you the opportunity to buy more shares at a cheaper price? Because guess what? As you all know, stocks go up in the long run because the U.S. economy goes up in the long run. The stock market over 100 year, 120 years looks like this, right? But over a 10 or 20 year period, it can look like this. It can look like a, a but over a long period of time, if you go back to the 08 financial crisis, if you go back to COVID, if you go back to the 2000 crash, you wish you were buying all the way down. You absolutely wish you were buying great companies all the way down. Because if you were doing that, you were rewarded very handsomely over time as things finally turned around. But again, it took buying companies that you understood that were very easy to understand that you can sit there and say, wait, they generate this cash flow and they tend to sell for this multiple. If that sounds overwhelming, it is a lot easier than you think. You just need to get more repetitions. I was also overwhelmed when I first started looking at financial statements. It was very overwhelming, but it got easier as I got used to it. That's why we have our software and that's why we make over 1900 videos going over these things. Is it repetitive? Absolutely. And that's the point of it. The more repetition you get, the better you'll be at it. There's a reason why Steph Curry just throws up threes in practice all day long. Because when the game's on the line, he wants to be still sitting there hitting those. Luckily, he didn't hit it in the 2016 NBA Finals against the Cavs in Game 7. So for that, I appreciate that, Steph. Thank you very much. However, along the way, same thing applies to numbers and math and money. The more repetitions you get, the easier it becomes. And the more you learn, the less you fear. If you went in front of 20,000 people to shoot a free throw, you'd be scared crapless. If you were Steph Curry, it's probably like nothing to you. Why? Because you've done it 10,000 times. Not really 10,000, but you know what I mean. But he's done a lot of repetitions and that's why it's easier for him. Same thing with the emotion and mindset. The more you look back at history, the more you understand what has happened in the past and all the awful things that have happened in this country over the last 120 years, and we still have seen amazing growth. We saw the Great Depression, which saw an 86% drop in stock prices. And guess what? Even if you bought the top, you got a pretty good return on your money over a long period of time. That's the key here. It's about dollar cost averaging. And when stocks are lower, you put more money into them because they're cheaper. If you loved them at 100 and you genuinely believe they were worth 100, when they fall to 50, you should love them even more. Warren Buffett and Munger talk about since they've owned Berkshire Hathaway, it's fallen in price by 50% three times. And it'll probably happen again here at some point. And guess what? They both said, did we feel any poorer? No, because we knew what the businesses would be worth in the long run. We knew it would rebound and it did. And that's what makes them the best investors. It's not analysis. Look at them. They're willing to pay a higher price for Apple than I am. Does that make me a better investor? No. But the point is, they're probably willing to pay, if you had to evaluate Apple with a bunch of value investors, they've even said, our intrinsic value for most companies we buy is higher than most. They just stick with it. And they let things compound. They buy high return on invested capital businesses and let these things compound until it's worth a ton more in the future. That's all you need to do. The sooner you start, the better. You might sit there and say, wait, wait, I'm 50. Doesn't matter. You can still get a great return for the next 15 or 20 years by being smart and educating yourself on the mindset and emotion and training yourself into that. I train myself. I continually train myself. I still reread books over and over that I've read. Things that matter to the investing world that most people have done Look at one time, I look at 20, 30, 40, 50 times over and over and over again. There's a reason why I'm in this community all the time seeing what people say about investing. Because it reassures me too when I see people say the same things over and over. It's about that mindset and emotion you have to have going through with investing. That's what will make you successful. So if you're interested in this and all of our tools and our software, we have a risk-free offer right now for one month. Sign up for the software. If before day 30, you don't like it, email help at everythingmoney.com. Full money back, no questions asked. Thank you very much for your time. There are three things that you absolutely need in order to be a successful investor. The proper mindset, the proper emotion, and the proper process. Which ones are the most important? 